I spent six days climbing to one of the oldest and least accessible mountains on Earth. Surrounded by vertical cliffs reaching over 400 meters tall, it's a place isolated for millions of years, evolving free from human influence. Its outworldly landscapes and inexplicable plants left me asking the question, how much of this world do we truly understand? This is the story of the mysteries I witnessed at the summit of Mount Roraima. After spending three days walking through the lush green La Gran Sabana, crossing two rivers and camping under the stars, our most difficult climb awaited us. As we set off early in the morning, we were quickly humbled by its steep and slippery path that made me question if we all could make it to its summit. As we slowly made our way up, I began to notice odd plants I had never seen before. Some looked like white corals you would expect to come across in the sea. Others looked like they were half insect, half plant. One tree in particular didn't even look like it was created by nature. It was as if someone or something carved out its patterns on its bark. Looking at these patterns reminded me of the legends I had heard from the indigenous Pemon people who have lived near Roraima. It is said that in the caves and crevices in this area reside elf-like creatures called the Mawari, known to be about the size of a human child with distinctive features such as red eyes and long hair. They are seen as mischievous and sometimes trickster-like beings known to engage in pranks and leading travelers astray. We were told multiple times during our journey to never shout or yell on the mountain to make sure we don't disturb these creatures living here. From the base of Roraima, the vertical cliff disappeared into the clouds, still concealing its mysterious landscape. As we climbed higher, the green overgrown forest turned to shrubs and stones. By far the most dangerous part of this hike was when we approached a natural stone staircase, slippery with rainwater flowing down from the top of the mountain. As I approached the summit, the thick fog slowly disappeared and revealed an outworldly landscape.
Pimon mythology, it is believed that Mount Roraima was once a colossal tree inhabited by the gods, connecting earth and the spiritual world. And what we witness today is its tree stump. The word tepui, which is used to describe the numerous tabletop mountains in Venezuela, translates to house of the gods. This journey to Roraima was supposed to be my last adventure on my solo backpacking journey I began 13 months ago. Traveling alone may sound lonely, but I find it the easiest way to connect with people you may otherwise never talk to. One of the many lessons I've learned from traveling alone is that friendships aren't a result of the amount of time you spend together, but by the challenges you face and the experiences you share. Language and cultural differences are irrelevant when everyone is willing to listen and try to understand each other. In our group, from the very first moment, from the very first moment we met in the car, in the started from the hotel meeting in the lobby, I had a feeling, no, it's not going to be solo. <laughs> it's not going to be solo. When, some, when you say something and somebody <laughs> sneezes at this time, in Russia we say, that's true, that's true. Ah, oh, that's true? Yeah. Okay, so okay. she's proven, this is true. It's like that. In Russia, when someone gets sick, they say that it's a test of what they're saying. It's like when someone gets sick, they say that it's a test of what they're saying. Okay. Thank you for doing that. He's also saying that in the trips, which he's done a lot, because he's done a lot, according to the much I've heard of his stories, que es fácil también y está bien estar digamos como de forma individual en un grupo, ¿no? Uh -huh. Que de igual forma eso está bien vale. y que en, en situaciones también pasa que esos es, esas personalidades individuales pues en palabras más o menos no conectan y bueno o sea pasan un tiempo juntos pero no necesariamente no conectan, conectan y bueno pasan el tiempo se despiden y se van uh -huh. pero que le, desde el primer día que nos vio que, que, que nos vio en el hotel y después en el carro y empezó a compartir y dijo, no, 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 esto no va a ser así, esto se ve que va a ser un grupo unido, no, algo así es lo que quiso decir. Sí. A beber esta copa de vino, ya se la tomó, ya se la tomó, ya se la tomó, ahora le toca al vecino. Salud. Aquí en Voz Baja, aunque esto es un momento de celebración, vamos a brindarle un aplauso que las una para siempre a esta hermosa familia. Y a partir de este momento, hoy, si están 
fortaleciendo espiritualmente para su futuro y para su vida juntos. Raima showed me the resilience of nature and its ability to find a way to thrive when left alone. In a world where we often seek efficiency and performance, it made me wonder how many of our problems can be solved by simply letting nature thrive instead of attempting to intervene ourselves. I'm happy that Roraima is difficult to reach and I hope it remains this way away from human interference. As one of those humans who made the journey into this sacred place, I hope my footsteps didn't disturb it too much, and those that follow continue to let nature do what it does best. This was supposed to be the end of my journey, but one conversation would make me cancel my flight back for the third time and stay in Venezuela for another three months.